Good morning. Uh, this is Roger Shaw and uh, Scott, who uh, made this design. Scott is uh, a uh, technical integrator of uh, software working directly for uh, Styles. And, um, but at any rate, we had given him this drawing, uh, or your drawing, from uh, Global Pictures. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let him walk you through how he uh, achieved this uh, fixture. So go ahead, Scott. Sure, sure. Yeah, good morning. And uh, here we have the article for Global uh, Louis Vuitton project in Hawaii, I believe it was. So that was exciting to work on. And uh, here it is uh, in perspective, kind of um, not rendered, but in a realistic view. And I just set that up as well as uh, plans and elevations, uh, sections just very simply drawn from the uh, overall 3D article. So how this was set up, I can look at in the article designer. We're going to modify article. And it's kind of easier to see if I minimize this stuff here. Just walk through it from the top. So here's your overall article. And within this first area, you have divisions. And the divisions are horizontal in this case, and they're defined uh, vertically in space by this linear division here. So this first number is the height of the toe kick. We wanted to make it, you know, a bit taller. We could do that, and everything adjusts parametrically um, as far as the zones with that. Same with the top here. Um, just make that a bit taller there, and that's this one in the middle fills the space that's not defined by these numbers here and the height that I have chosen here. So just kind of go back to the head. We'll dive into this a little bit deeper. So once that's divided, I have another zone here on top. And within that zone, I have couple more dividers, one over on the right side for a, kind of a setback for this top piece, which was uh, three-eighths of an inch. And here I've uh, set it back three-quarters of an inch. And this lower piece will be set back three-eighths of an inch. So there ends up with a three-eighths kind of reveal on the top here. Um, but again, uh, left to right, this linear division is defined here. Um, with the sort of complicated glass area here. I did do some oversizing on, on different panels to uh, fill that space accordingly. Um, but left to right, we're defined here with another division. And we can dig into that further. And you see over on the right, we have this zone. And there's really nothing in there. It's just space moving it over 3 quarters of an inch. And then here we have I guess our middle zone in this case. And in our middle zone, we have a top shelf, which has a kind of a special construction principle um, adjusted for the mitering situations. And I uh, won't delve into that one. That wasn't very much customization on that. Uh, left and right sides, these are just typical library sides. Um, here you have options on how you're going to treat the edges and the connections, in this case, for the next connection that refers to the back. Front would be previous, next is the back. And as you're going around, you know, um, counterclockwise, it would be previous would be the right side of the back, next would be the left, previous would be the back of this side, and next would be the front. So got to get used to the terminology a little bit, but there you have some trims and how that's mitered. Uh, back. So this is a back panel um, which has certain properties allowing you to oversize it which I've done to kind of drop down which is sort of what it looked like was happening in the 2D drawings. It was hard to tell for certain um, but I've oversized it uh, in, a, in a couple of ways here. Undersized it in this case and then oversized it to get it to come into the area that I needed it to. Uh, the back here just mitered left, right, and top. Um, and this is divided again 
with this here, um, partition in this case, which has its own construction principle and connectors. We got a uh, zone on the right, which has our keyboard pullout. And the keyboard pullout is actually a uh, shelf, virtual shelf here defines the space in this case. And we have our upper zone, which shouldn't have anything in there. And then our lower zone, which has our top shelf, which again is not necessarily a top shelf, it just has certain properties. And I came up with a uh, construction principle um, that would define that shelf and kind of make it the right size for this pullout. And then the drop edge here uh, is defined as a back. Um, and then there's some movement here with the bottom being undersized. And that's basically the whole upper zone. So now I could, over here, look at the glass. And as far as the glass goes, have this piece here, which has some oversizing, undersizing to uh, just fill the space here. So this is a little bit more hard-coded and, and you get some parametric properties for it, but not uh, necessarily 100%. You might need to make a couple of small adjustments to it. And then again, here is the back, which is glass. And that's all that's in the upper zone. This piece here will be part of the middle zone, this glass piece, as well as that side. So. It will come into the middle zone vertically and look at our first division here, which is a virtual division defined by this. And like I said, uh, this zone over here on the right side is just three-eighths of an inch um, to kind of get that reveal working like it needs to be. So I could change this parametrically on the uh, left side, for example, just bring that over. Now we got a real narrow shelf here and all the glass and everything is still lining up like you'd expect it to. Move that back over and look a little bit so, further. So ba basically here. what you're saying is, is you can take an existing, uh, these guys never do the same thing uh, uh, twice, but you're taking an, exi you know, you just took the existing uh, fixture that you built and by changing a couple of uh, uh, parameters in there uh, actually readjusted the uh, fixture to a new a new fixture. Yeah, that's correct, Roger. And um, also what I didn't mention is where you have these kind of hard numbers, this could be a variable also so that when you change this uh, variable, which I have over here, this dollar sign, I'd have to get into the variable table to show you um, closer about that, but you could have a variable here so that if this was uh, subject to change on a job-by-job -job basis, you could define that in your variable list and then not even have to come in here and mess with the numbers, so, which is nice in some cases as well. So I'll just continue going through here. This piece over here is just space. This here has got a couple of different divisions going on. And here I have it divided in the back because there was a, a bit of a, a reveal or a zone um, in the back that needed some extra space. And I could bring it you know, forward by 10 inches if I wanted to and everything adjusts parametrically that way. And just move it back. And here we have a top shelf, right? uh, a bottom shelf kind of spanning two particle zones. That's what it looks like, might be built like from the drawings that I got. And here's a division. These are two article zones on the left and right side of that. And again, parametric here. So in this side, I have a virtual divider and then this is an article zone. So in the article zone I have 
actually an article designed, which is called AZGR. Yeah. Can you can you please explain uh, the difference between a virtual divider and a real divider? Sure. Uh, a virtual divider would just kind of define spaces within uh, an article, and it's a, a zone separator so that um, you could have a divider be uh, a partition, for example. And it is a partition, and I could come and make it an actual partition. And there it's an actual partition with the construction principle and machining associated with it. But in this case, it just made more sense to do it as a virtual divider and then have the, that side actually in the article zone. Right. So, I, so I, can, I can come up with any cube or any, uh, even with, with uh, radiuses in, in the front. In other words, you just started out by saying this is the height, width, and depth of uh, this article. But you could start with radius articles and stuff like that and build it up from there using the virtual space dividers and stuff like that uh, and, and also, correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm just trying to give them a, uh, a broader broader picture beyond uh, this particular fixture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, um, you can define that. We're in a plan view right now. and. Um, I can do outline geometry to define a different sort of uh, outline in the plan view. As you see here, the corner is sort of clipped on this plan view cabinet here, and that's the zone I'm working on. You also have an option to look at it in the elevation view with the corner clipped so that like, perhaps you could have an article that fits under a stairway and uh, the top is sloped to tuck right up under there. So there's there's lots of uh, different ways to lay out the outside of it and then fill in the spaces. Does this does this article have doors? No, there's no doors on this. Okay. I don't okay. believe there's just drawers. Okay. But uh, yeah. We can look at an article with doors and it's no, I just, uh, they, they really wanted to see this disappointed, and I'm so happy that you're able to take the time to show them, uh, mm -hmm. show them this. And um, I will uh, uh, rec co finish up copying this, put it out there in YouTube, and enable them to see this recording of how you were able to achieve that. Uh, just, just uh, you know, this is a tough question because, uh, giving them the real uh, idea of how long it would actually take them. But assuming that these guys were pros at, at figuring out how to divide the space up using these virtual dividers mm -hmm. and laying that out, they, you know, they're going to end up doing it every single day. Uh, or they'll build parametric uh, units, which probably require very little uh, modification. But just from scratch, uh, assuming that you had the the proper parts, drawers, doors, uh, sliding shelves, hardware, and all that. Uh, how long do you think an experienced user would take to achieve this uh, fixture? Uh, well, this is fairly complicated, lots of uh, ins and outs, but uh, less than a day, I would say, is reasonable. Uh, one of the more complicated um, areas may be well, I'd have to actually go out of the article and just show you one of the more complicated type of uh, areas in here. And I have to go and select one of the articles that's within the article zone. And here, top shelf, it's kind of blocky, but there's actually a lot of intelligence here. And here I'm in the construction principles where I have options to, you know, protrude or inset with uh, numbers or variables there, and uh, connector situations. And then, of course, I can go into look at my part definition. And here's my part definition where I have um, part type, and it's a multi-part in this case, and the edge profiles and connections and machining that could occur on that. But we'll dig a little bit deeper into the multi-part where it has kind of individual items applied. And then here you're looking at your multi-part. 
um, which has construction points in here for layout, and then you actually apply your part definition to the construction points. In this case, it's just a uh, drop edge, I believe. Uh -huh. Yep. So that has its own uh, limitless amount of de definitions, and um, just laying out how this all comes together and with the offsets and Z values and then kind of doing the stretchable purchase part from scratch, um, which is this profile here, which is a metal uh, extrusion that's in the cabinet. That's all part of this multi-part. And uh, once that's done, then of course you can just uh, apply it right here very easily and move on to the next item. In, in my case, I had to spend a bit of time, you know, working with that to get it adjusted exactly like I wanted it to. So that, that, that's what took the bulk of the time in uh, kind of my setup for this. You know, so if they, had, are, if they had that already established, it wouldn't be quite as dramatic. Um, what, no, no. Uh, but, but even at this point, you know, now that you, you've spent, let's just say you've spent six to eight hours on this project, uh, at this point you have a cut list, you have a parts list, you have a purchase list, and you have G-code. Is that correct? I mean, I know yeah. you haven't, yeah. you haven't generated, yeah. but you've got the, da the data to, to push the buttons to send it off to a point-to-point -point or a router or a saw combination. Uh, yeah, with exactly. having done this. So, uh, I mean, one of the things that we talked about last Friday at uh, on site with uh, Global Fixtures uh, was a conversation between uh, Tim and Jeff. And uh, basically, currently, the way they do it is they do 2D drawings. Uh, Tim, who uh, basically, I believe he works for uh, Brian Murphy's uh, unit, or team, and then that goes down uh, over to Jeff, and then Jeff has to pull off the parts, and then he puts them into uh, Ned Brown's uh, CAD code, and CAD Ned's, Ned uh, ends up uh, doing some uh, calculations to reduce the part to the uh, cut size. And that's what they currently do, and so we're looking at somewhat of a hybrid position to where both uh, Jeff's efforts and uh, Tim's efforts uh, yield the same results uh, with uh, Jeff having uh, oversight on all of the input to the factory. I think that's where we're at with this particular mm -hmm. company. But anyway, go ahead. You were showing them. Uh, uh, you mentioned the reports, and I just wanted to uh, kind of touch on that. And here we have a little bit hard to see here. I'll zoom in a bit. And make that bigger. Yeah. Well, your perspective view elevations, and these are all uh, sort of automatically generated as part of this report. And then we get into here, there's a problem with my templates where I have uh, something coming in on a scale here, and i got to adjust that. But here we basically see all of our parts dimensions, and then a call out on the perspective of where it exists in the article, as well as the barcode which you can scan and run this part at your uh, at your machine. So a lot of information there, and it's for every single part. We could go through all the way to the end where we have purchase parts, uh, drawer slides, and uh, even down to shelf clips and dowels. And uh, there's a stretchable purchase part, which in this case doesn't have very much detail, but you can, of course, call that a style mark, you know, whatever you want. Okay. So that's kind of some of the information that exists there already. And if I wanted to look at something with machining here, I could just select it, look at it in my list, oh, select it, and here's in the list, and if I wanted to look and isolate it, I'll just isolate that element, and here's that shelf, and look at 3D workings. So 3D workings kind of shows a bit 
more detail on the, the routing. It's not in, exactly um, maybe what you'd expect, but um, it, it gives you a good idea of what is going on with the machine for this. And just show all elements again. Yeah, it definitely lets you drill down to individual parts. Uh, can you show the, 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 the Visio manager and show how you can go from uh, some details to major details? And how, how it... Sure. Yeah, I, I usually, because I have a fairly speedy computer, I'm able to work in the full render mode most of the time. And uh, I don't mind seeing extra edges, but you can bring it down to just engineering to deep engineering details in this case, and then define what you want to see um, in the engineering details, which in this case is mostly the same as the uh, render. Um, but if I come down into planning, look at that. Um, this this is kind of what I was thinking that here. this this is kind of what I was thinking Tim uh, might be using for space planning. They do they do space planning before they dial into the uh, actual fixtures so he could go oh, okay. at this level for speed and then sure. uh, dial it up for uh, you know the one off uh, generation. Right, and if I come all the way into modus one, that really is just two D space planning mode and. drop down into that, see what it looks like. I never actually checked that for this article. Be interesting. It seems to be running a little bit slower just due to this meeting. Yeah, this go to meeting is always details about it, height, width, depth. Um, this is actually late Tuesday, so I named it that. Um, of course, you can name it anything you want. But this is the most basic visual level where you could, for example, have cabinets all just laid out 24-inch wide drawer cabinet next to a 36-inch wide sink cabinet and just lay out your squares that way and then hand it off to the maybe engineering guy if you would pump up the details to look at uh, much more of what's coming in and can make adjustments or you know customize on a case-by-case yeah. -case basis. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's go ahead and stop, and um, I'm going to stop the recording right now. Hold on.